بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے ویل ڈسکس اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک آف ہیمو ڈائنامکس دیٹ از تھرومبوسس ویل ڈسک ویل ڈسکس دس ٹاپک ان ٹو لیکچرس ٹوڈے ویل ڈسکس دا امپورٹنٹ ایب نارمیلٹیز دیٹ لیڈ ٹو دا فارمیشن آف اے تھرومبس ان دا بلڈ ویسل ویل ان دا نیکسٹ لیکچر ویل ڈسکس few very important uh, terms related to thrombosis and the morphologies in the thrombosis so uh, generally speaking thrombosis it is the formation of a blood clot in the blood vessel when there is formation of the blood clot it results in obstruction of the blood flow to some specific organ and due to obstruction of the blood flow to that organ it may result in the ischemia or infarction of that blood vessel if we consider a blood vessel if it is injured the body it uses platelets and fibrin to form the blood clot and when the blood clot is formed it will result in the prevention of the blood loss from the injured blood vessel as we have studied in all the previous lectures starting from the hemostasis then the role of platelets endothelium then there will was the role of the coagulation factors all those uh, lectures they were associated with the prevention of the blood loss so now we'll discuss how the thrombosis it occurs in a blood vessel this slide it displays uh, very important abnormalities that are associated with the thrombosis or thrombus formation and these three abnormalities they are the endothelial injury alteration in the blood flow and hypercoagulability when these three they are put together they will result in the formation of a thrombus inside a blood vessel and this triad this is called as virchow's triad so question can be asked of uh, 1.5 marks in the ospi what are the abnormalities that lead to the formation of thrombosis So when 1.5 marks question is asked then just write the names the endothelial injury alteration in the blood flow and hypercoagulability but sometimes the question can be asked uh, in the form of an SCQ of 5 marks that elaborate virchow's triad or what are the abnormalities that lead to the formation of thrombus then you have to elaborate uh, these three uh, abnormalities Uh, you have to write 3 to 4 lines uh, of all these abnormalities starting from the endothelial injury then alteration in the blood flow and then the hypercoagulability so endothelial injury that is particularly important for the thrombus formation in the heart and in the arterial circulation because in heart and arterial circulation the blood flow that is normally high as compared to the veins or capillaries and this high blood flow it may impede the clotting by preventing platelet adhesion and washing out the activated coagulation factors while in case of uh, veins and capillaries the blood flow that is not high so the wash out effect of blood that is not uh, present so the chances of thrombosis they are more in the veins and the capillaries as compared to the arteries thus uh, thrombus formation which occurs inside the uh, heart for example uh, during myocardial infarction or in the atherosclerotic arteries or at the site uh, where the blood vessels they are damaged as a result of inflammation uh, for example vasculitis that is largely due to the endothelial injury the physical loss of endothelium it can lead to the exposure of the subendothelial collagen when the subendothelial collagen that is exposed it will result in binding of the platelet with the help of uh, glycoprotein 1b receptor that interacts with the von willebrand factor and von willebrand factor it helps in the anchorage of the platelets to the exposed subendothelial collagen and also there occurs the release of the tissue factor so all of these they will lead to activation of the platelets Uh, but it should also be noted that endothelium it it, uh, it is not uh, required to be physically damaged 
for example any disturbance in the balance between the prothrombotic and the antithrombotic activities of the endothelium it can initiate the local clotting events so the dysfunctional endothelial cells they can produce more uh, uh, procoagulant factors for example platelet adhesion molecules the uh, plasminogen activator inhibitors and the tissue factor or uh, they may synthesize the less anticoagulant factors for example thrombomodulin tissue plasminogen activator and prostacyclin briefly speaking endothelium dysfunction it can be in, uh, induced by a wide variety of the insults for example any disturbance in the blood flow hypertension some toxins for example bacterial toxins endotoxin of bacteria some metabolic abnormalities for example disturbance in the uh, cholesterol uh, resulting hypercholesterolemia and various metabolic abnormalities for example diabetes mellitus all these uh, all these diseases or all these condition they can lead to the endothelial dysfunction the second important abnormality that is associated with thrombosis it is alteration or abnormality in the blood flow if we talk about the normal blood flow that is laminar in nature such that uh, the platelets and other cells like wbcs red blood cells they flow centrally in the blood vessels and they are separated from the endothelium by plasma so there is plasma between the endothelium and the center of the uh, blood vessel while well, the central part of the blood vessel they contain more cells like platelets and the uh, rbcs and wbcs turbulence uh, in in this blood flow for example if uh, the cells they are distributed towards the uh, endothelium that will be called as turbulent blood flow turbulence in the blood flow it contributes to the development of the thrombosis both in the arteries and the uh, veins and this uh, turbulence in the blood flow it causes endothelial injury and also produce local pockets of the stasis and as you know stasis state stasis uh, if we talk about uh, in simple words kisi cheez ka thahar jana so stasis is the major uh, contributor uh, that results in the development of the thrombus like um, it can result in the development of the thrombus in the veins it can result in the development of the thrombus in the uh, arteries but uh, development of the uh, thrombus in the veins that is more commonly associated with the stasis because the stasis of the blood in arteries that is not usually present because of the high blood flow so alteration in the normal blood flow it promotes the endothelial cell activation when the endothelial cells they are activated it will result in the uh, activation of various clotting factors it will result in the activation of the platelets the platelets they will get attached to the subendothelial collagen uh, with the help of von willebrand factor uh, tissue factor release will occur and other procoagulant factors um, um, they may get secreted uh second important thing that that is associated with abnormality of blood flow it is the disruption in the laminar blood flow when the normal blood flow that is disrupted it will bring the platelets and the other cells in contact with the endothelium so there will be high chances of uh, platelet activation and resulting in the formation of primary platelet plaque the alteration in the blood flow it will also prevent the washout effect of the blood due to prevention of this washout effect the activated clotting factors they are not removed or they are not replaced by the fresh flowing blood and uh, as a result these activated clotting factors they will initiate the process of blood clotting <clears throat> these are the few very important conditions or diseases which can lead to turbulence or the abnormality in the blood flow the most important being the atherosclerotic plaques and these atherosclerotic plaques they expose the subendothelial von willebrand factor and causes the uh, and also causes the turbulence in the blood flow 
Similarly, a very important condition that is called as aneurysm, that is the dilatation of the blood vessel or the artery that serves uh, a very important cause of uh, stasis and can lead to the generation of thrombus at that site. Similarly, uh, myocardial infarction. In myocardial infarction, there is hypokinesia or decreased movement or non-contractile uh, element of the heart chamber that is seen and this non-contractile or akinetic heart uh, chamber that may result in the stasis of the blood uh, blood flow at that specific location so ultimately leading to the generation of thrombus similarly mitral valve stenosis that is usually seen in the case of rheumatic heart disease it may uh, result in the stasis of the blood flow and can cause thrombosis Sickle cell anemia that is a very important cause of uh, thrombosis because in sickle cell anemia the red blood cells they are deformed and it may result in uh, uh, hypercoagulable state the blood viscosity that may be increased when the blood viscosity that is increased again uh, the flow of the blood that is decreased so ultimately resulting in the stasis and this stasis it can result in the generation of thrombus. The third important abnormality that is associated with uh, thrombosis that is hypercoagulability. What happens in hypercoagulability? Uh, there occurs uh, decreased blood flow due to increased viscosity. For example, as in the previous slide, I uh, gave an example uh, that is the sickle cell anemia in which the blood viscosity that increases. So that is a hypercoagulable state and it may result in the stasis of the blood ultimately progressing to the thrombus formation when we talk about the hypercoagulable states they are divided into primary and secondary causes now this slide it shows the primary or the genetic causes of hypercoagulable state and the most common being the factor 5 mutation resulting in the formation of factor 5 leaden. In this uh, factor 5 leaden, there is a missense mutation resulting in substitution of arginine amino acid by glutamic acid amino acid. This factor 5 leaden, it uh, can increase the chances of developing thrombosis especially in the lower limbs and the lungs. However, most people with the factor 5 leaden, they never develop the abnormal blood clots or the thrombosis. But in people who do develop the abnormal blood clots, it can lead to life-threatening complications. The second important uh, condition uh, that results in the genetic uh, hypercoagulable state, that is the mutation in the prothrombin gene. Similarly, elevated level of homocysteine that can contribute to homozygous homocysteinuria and other uh, cause of uh, this hypercoagulable state. Similarly, few rare disorders like protein C deficiency, protein S deficiency and deficiency of antithrombin 3. These can uh, result in venous thrombosis and recurrent thromboembolism especially in the lower limbs so all these uh, conditions they are the genetic conditions that lead to hypercoagulable state so please remember these conditions they are very easy St starting from the factor 5 leaden then there is a prothrombin gene mutation or prothrombin mutation then comes the antithrombin 3 deficiency protein c deficiency and protein s deficiency and a very rare cause but an important one that is elevated levels of homocysteine resulting in the homozygous homocysteinuria. Now this slide uh, it shows the secondary or the acquired causes of hypercoagulability. Secondary or the acquired causes of the hypercoagulability uh, they have multifactorial uh, pathogenesis or pathophysiology. If we talk about the high risk causes of thrombosis, they may be, uh, they may include the prolonged bed rest or immobilization, for example, uh, especially in the cases uh, uh, of uh, congestive heart failure like uh, CLD, CRF, the, 
or uh, in the lower limb trauma when the patient is not able to move so prolonged bed rest or immobilization is a very important cause of thrombosis especially the deep venous thrombosis myocardial infarction again uh, the akinetic or non-contractile uh, heart chamber that can result in thrombosis uh, in that specific area atrial fibrillation a very important cause and the overall risk of developing thrombosis due to atrial fibrillation that uh, increases up to 10 percent tissue injury for example if we talk about uh, the lower limb surgery the fracture of the lower limb or the burns uh, of uh, any area of the body any part of the body that can uh, be a very important cause of thrombosis uh, cancer especially the metastatic cancer that metastasize to the hematogenous root it can lead to hypercoagulable state uh, cardiac valves prosthetic cardiac valves uh, that is a cause of hypercoagulable state and this is the reason the patients who are having prosthetic cardiac valves they are on a lifelong uh, treatment with the uh, warfarin similarly disseminated intravascular coagulation that is also called as uh, consumptive or consumption coagulopathy in which all, initially all the coagulation factors they are consumed uh, so initial stages may uh, there occur thrombosis followed by once the coagulation factors they are consumed they are occur bleeding from various body sites and uh, the other important causes they are the heparin induced thrombocytopenia and antiphospholipid antibody syndrome heparin induced thrombocytopenia it occurs due to uh, uh, administration of heparin and this heparin it may result in the formation of the antibodies and these antibodies they may form complex with the heparin and the platelet factor 4 and these antibodies they can bind to platelets and results in their activation and aggregation and this effect on the platelets and the endothelial damage which is due to the end, uh, binding of the antibody it produce a prothrombic state so heparin induced thrombocytopenia that is a very important cause of acquired hypercoagulability so a few antibodies are produced and these antibodies they bind to platelets and these antibodies they are produced due to the administration of unfractionated heparin so it can result in the prothrombotic state or thrombosis similarly antiphospholipid antibody syndrome a very important syndrome especially when we talk about the pregnant females this antiphospholipid antibody syndrome it consists of antiphospholipid antibodies which are a heterogeneous group of the autoantibodies and these autoantibodies they include igg IgA and IgM this syndrome has a clinical manifestation that include recurrent thrombosis recurrent miscarriages uh, along with thrombocytopenia and vegetations on the cardiac valve so four important things they are involved in this antiphospholipid antibody syndrome please note down they are recurrent thrombosis recurrent episodes of thrombosis recurrent uh, miscarriages thrombocytopenia and vegetations on the cardiac valve depending on the vascular bed involved for example if you talk about uh, uh, the pulmonary bed the clinical uh, presentation they can uh, for example if we talk about the pulmonary uh, bed or the pulmonary vasculature the clinical presentation it can include difficulty in the breathing and this difficulty in the breathing it may be due to some uh, thrombus that arise in the pulmonary bed similarly pulmonary hypertension that can also be an important uh, clinical manifestation uh, one of the very important complication of this antiphospholipid antibody syndrome that is the fetal death and this fetal death that is related to antibody mediated inhibition of tissue plasminogen activator and as uh, tissue plasminogen activator that is necessary for the trophoblastic invasion of the uterus so uh, the villi the placental villi they invade the uterus 
with the help of this TPA. Antiphospholipid antibody syndrome is also a cause of renal microangiopathy resulting in the renal failure that is associated with multiple capillary and arterial thrombosis. Antiphospholipid antibody syndrome has primary and secondary form. Uh, for example, if we talk about the patients who are having systemic uh, lupus erythematosus, they are called or they uh, fall under the category of secondary antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. While uh, the patients of uh, primary antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, they only exhibit, uh, exhibit the manifestations of uh, hypercoagulable state. Uh, while the uh, other autoimmune conditions uh, like SLE they may be absent in those cases. So antiphospholipid antibody syndrome it is quite important if we talk about the acquired causes of thrombosis. Along with uh, these high risks uh, of thrombosis there are few uh, low risk uh, causes of the thrombosis that may include uh, oral contraceptive use hyperestrogenic states, especially the pregnancy, nephrotic syndrome, cardiomyopathy, and smoking. So this was the lecture uh, about the various abnormalities uh, that are associated with the uh, thrombus formation or thrombosis. In the next lecture about thrombosis, we will discuss the morphology, the fate of thrombus, and uh, the differences between the arterial and the venous thrombi or uske saath hum uh, thoda sa uh, ye bhi dekhenge what is the disseminated intravascular coagulation kyunki aaj humne uska naam uh, liya hai isme naam pada hai DIC ka so that uh, also needs to be elaborated uh, just like we elaborated the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome and the heparin induced thrombocytopenia so till then take care and allah hafiz